What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another video, another day, another dollar. We're going to be breaking down our futures contract per usual. A uh, little bit of a different setup we got going on here. Just running through it real quick in the top right. You got the daily chart that we're looking at. Bottom right, we got our weekly. Middle, we got our 15 and our hourly charts. Top left, one minute chart with standard deviations, 144 simple moving average. And then bottom left is our 30 minute time frame. Uh, the one we primarily trade off of. Uh, just have it set up this way, just kind of easier access to kind of look at everything as we're moving along. Uh, really good way to kind of view my moving averages and where those are located uh, instead of having them on the chart, but be able to see it from a daily standpoint, what those are looking like, have my hourly chart with the overnight session. Uh, same for the 15 minute chart. Those are going to have the hourlies uh, or the overnight sessions. And then we're going to have our 30 minute time frame with no overnight session uh, that we'll be viewing from that point forward. Today was uh, today and Friday have been pretty much a lackluster. Uh, nonetheless, you've gotten some movement, but not a whole lot. Uh, risk reward has been kind of poor for the uh, for the lack of better words. Um, the daily has had two inside days. So if we look at our daily chart here, bring up our daily chart. We've had two inside days after breaking out of this previous daily balance that we had, broke out of it. We one time frame down one, two days in a row, three counting Friday. Technically speaking, it was an inside day. So you can say that is a one, two days down and then down to balance. Technically, we have not stopped the one time framing down on the daily because we have not taken out a previous day's high, right? So if we're looking here, Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. However, we have had two inside days, both within the 25th range. Uh, we, After the big short squeeze up on Thursday and then a big pullback, kind of doing nothing, we've just been chopping within that range for the last two days. Now with that, we need to be uh, you know, obeying some rules when it comes to inside days, right? You want to go whenever you come out of the inside day, you want to go with it and monitor it for continuation. So in our case right now, if we take out the highs right here at 5525, we want to go with it and monitor it for continuation. So that would mean going trend up, filling the gap, potentially having a really strong move to the upside. Same thing to the downside, taking out the day's low down here at 5481 and getting extension to the downside, continuing that one time framing down. Now, technically, we have not stopped the one time frame down motion yet, but you can call it down to balance. You can use the high up here at 55.51.75 as your balance high, and you can use 54.32.50, the 25th slow as your balance low, and say we chop around in between here until we get a move one way or the other, right? So there's nothing wrong with saying that we are already in a balance. Matter of fact, I am going to say that we are in a balance. Uh, and we'll be looking for a move, hopefully higher. Um, today was, like I said, not a whole lot happened today. As you can see, we ended up with a nine wide point of control, just shows some very choppy uh, price action. We attempted to go trend down early in the morning, only to fail. Um, we did get some good extension, but we ultimately failed. And then that's when you knew fading the edges or the extremes was kind of going to be the key thing here, uh, we push down lower. Once we got back into the range, build a set of single prints. Uh, you knew the short game was for the most part over and we we're going to be in for a pretty much a choppy session. Uh, it's kind of what you look at whenever you have those fading uh, events, right? You just end up with a choppy session for like the last several hours. Uh, and you can see that on our hourly chart here. It was indeed pretty much choppy. I mean, not a whole lot the trade off of we got the overnight low early on in the day uh overnight low being down there at 40 uh, 54 96 25 we got that early in the morning um got that fairly fairly quick in the morning and then you know attempted to push down lower but really didn't get much extension wrote uh, or continuing the one time frame down potentially coming out of an inside day to the downside we didn't get either of those uh just a very choppy session so nothing was here for me However, if you guys did watch my video last week, I said that I was going to be entering in a swing long position. 
uh, targeting the August 30th. Uh, I meant to say the September 30th. I wanted something with a little bit more time. I said August 30th, but I meant the September 30th. So I'll be taking a 600 call around. I'm actually long three of these right now. Currently, 34 cents. Uh, bought those today as I do think the trend to the downside has begun to slow. As if we look right here on our daily chart, we've held the 50 day moving average pretty well for the last couple of days. Now, obviously, if we continue to move lower, I'm not going to lose a whole lot of money on the swing trade. I'll continue to hold it. You know, I'm only putting in what I'm uh, willing to risk. But ultimately, I think we're going to have a little bit of consolidation between this nine and the 50, ultimately popping above the nine and resuming what we've been wanting to do and what we've been doing all year long, which is moving higher. Uh, and I think we'll at some point see those 6,000s or the 600 area in SPY, right? We pulled back, we filled this gap that we had here. Um, now we're just going to look for a move back up and hopefully fill the gaps on the upside with that. Uh, being said, let's look at the weekly. Our weekly, ugh. after a very ugly couple, two weeks, right? The weekly is still one time framing down, all right? Nothing stops the one time framing down on the weekly until we take out the previous week's high. Now, last week's high was 56.29.75. I'm not expecting us to do that, uh, but if we cannot take out the last week's low down here at 54.32.50, if we cannot take that low out, continue to push lower, um, then the likelihood, right? If we can't push lower than that, then the likelihood of having an inside week is good and consolidation and then potentially taking out the weekly high here wherever it may be this week's high to rotate higher in the long run would uh it's kind of what i'm seeing set up in my head hopefully that makes sense this week ends up being an inside week the next week we end up taking that weekly high out putting us officially into a balance and then potentially targeting that and then coming out of balance and one time framing up the upside as the monthly, if we look at the monthly time frame real quick. The monthly is still one time framing up, right? We do not stop the one time framing up on the monthly until we take out this week or this month's low, which is 54.32.50. And just so happens to be last week's low, right? So if we take out, so say we close this month, we have one, two, two more trading days. Say we close out this month without taking a taking out a lower low or uh, creating a low and then next month we come in we hold this low here at 32.50 we rotate up one time framing up continues however if we take out that low on the weekly low uh, it will continue to one time frame down and the monthly will also come into a balance which is you know you may see some more liquidation at that point on the downside if that were to be the case uh, hopefully not hopefully we'll be on the right side of this but um you never know emotional market uh, a lot of volatility come up with the upcoming election so like i said if you want to call this a balanced area using the 55 50 area as your high and the low down here at 32 50 on your daily um monitor it for continuation or lack of when you come out of this area of balance Right. So ultimately, what I'd like to see tomorrow is a hold of 5,500, take out 5,525, a move up to 5,550, firmly putting us into a uh, one, time frame, one time framing up mode, and then potentially filling the gap down the road. Right. That's ultimately what we would like to see. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, hope you all have a wonderful day. Catch you in the next one.